Hi folks, Jack from Smoky Mountain Scientific. Hopefully I'll get this thing recorded correctly. Today I want to show you some, uh, some work we're doing on a project for, uh, uh, for electrochemical detection of analytes using uh, capillary electrophoresis. All right, so uh, this project is pretty complex. It uses a, um, uh, a Raspberry Pi to, uh, to measure electrochemical uh, activity, and that activity is then transferred to a computer via uh, Wi-Fi, right? So there's reasons we can't do it directly, and that's how life is, okay? All right, so like I said, we're, we're working on a uh, user interface, and this is the recording user interface. We have two different, record, two different user interfaces, one for doing the recording and one for doing the analysis. This is what the analysis user interface looks like, okay? So this is the recording user interface, and let's see if it's going to work for us now. All right, so we, we are connected to the uh, Raspberry Pi. We have a bunch of different uh, parameters we can input. We have a, uh, a voltage set. We can set the millivolts. It's 150 now. We can change that. We can change the gain. We can go from uh, all the way down to 500 picoamps full scale and up to 500 microamps full scale. So uh, that's not been tested. We, we need to get our hardware fixed before we really know the limits on our, our data. Uh, this is set to record uh, a data point every 200 milliseconds, so five data points a second, but we can, we can make that more granular. We can make it less granular. Uh, this is set up to record for a total of 10 minutes because just because you don't want to leave this thing run overnight. I guess you could, but I don't really see a reason to do that. We can load a new parameter set or save this parameter set. And, you know, once you know uh, the values you want to have, then you'll want to save the parameter set and uh, use it in the future. All right, so this is all for a constant voltage experiment. We, all, we also have a, a testing experiment, which is going to be the sawtooth, right? So today what I'm going to do is just run a, um, run an ex, run a, a, a dummy experiment and, whoops, wrong one again. And what we're, could be that Ah, now it's running. Okay. So we had a problem before. Now we are collecting this dummy data, right? So hopefully I'll be able to edit the uh, thing. All right. So our dummy data consists of a spike, which is supposed to indicate the start of a uh, electrophoresis experiment. And then this sine wave, which just gives me data that I can plot, right? Okay, we've collected one, two, three, four, five different uh, electropherograms, and now we're going to save that data. Before we do, let's give it a name. Let's call this JSS. Nope, that's can't type. J need to have our. Uh, let's say it's on page 101 of book. Book. 23. Okay, so just giving it some random name. Now I'm going to hit the save data, which calls up a whatever that's called a um, thing that allows us to to enter a name and to save it. And I want to do that. Okay, so now we have the uh, that data there. Now we can switch over to our, our user interface that does the analysis. We can load that data and we're going to open it up. And now you can see that the, this is the data in the main data uh, window. 
and we have this yellow box that we can move back and forth. In order to move it, you have to have your cursor inside that small box and you just move it wherever you want it. What I want to do is line this up so that that cursor lines up with the, uh, the start of my data. The start of my data is a little off from the center, from the, uh, the edge of the yellow box, and that's how far it's over is determined by this number in this text box. It says 0.2 seconds to the left of the, uh, of the cursor, right? The right side of the box is 3 seconds over on this side of the cursor, and we want that to just in just in, uh, encompass one data set. So let's change that number there. We're going to click in there, backspace a couple of times, and make this 1.5 seconds. In order to update that, we need to hit the cursor button. All right, and now you can see we have our data inside, the data that we want to have inside this yellow box. Hit When we hit the split button, that transfers that data down to the split data window. Okay, so moving over here, we can now pick this next set of, of, uh, of chromatography, or not chromatography, electropharogram data. It starts at 3.42 seconds, and when we hit the split button, we now have this blue data at 3.42 seconds. Uh, we can get that next one, hit the split button, screw, uh, move the cursor, split again, and uh, we'll collect our fifth and final data set there. All right, so this gives us all of our data in, in, in an overlapping viewable um, mode, and hopefully that will be useful to you. All right. All right, so I think I'm going to stop it there, and we will see if we can't edit out some of that crap. All right, hope that helped.